Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the M1 Ultra, the the chip that is in the higher end of of these of these two uh, options for the Mac Studio. And right now, the the high end Mac Studio is the only Apple device where you can choose to get this M1 Ultra chip. Uh, you can choose the M1 Max for the the low end. <laughs> low end <with> air quotes <laughs> that's a low bar <laughs> yeah and then the m1 ultra for the high end what's interesting though is it really as apple explained it to us the m1 ultra is really two m1 max chips that are linked together via some high bandwidth bridge that they built into the m1 max and didn't tell anybody about ultra uh, fusion yeah, at two and a half terabytes per second yeah <laughs> You beat me to it, Pete, because Sorry. I made the, I made a note of that too. So yeah. they're like, normally, wow. connecting processors can ruin your day if you don't do it right. But it sounds like they did it right, and that it's you know very high bandwidth between the two of them. Yeah. So it's actually pretty clever. It's really clever. I I I like it. Yeah, it's super smart, and and that's how we go up to that 128 gigs of RAM in this thing, right? right. right? Because we have uh, two M1 Max chips that both get to do their full thing. Uh, one thing I, I, I really liked about what Apple said with this is to software, it looks like one chip. And yeah. that, right? Like, that's super smart of them to, to do that because... It allows all the apps that have already been written to just run on it, and Apple takes care of you know spreading it around on the on the various chips. So I, I, I like this. And, yeah. and this keeps yeah. uh, is it Moore's law? Roughly every eighteen months, double is that the name of it? it that's true. Yeah. We haven't talked about Moore's law in a long time. It was Gordon mm. Moore, the the yeah. co-founder of Intel, mm. said that yeah, every eighteen months the processing power would would double. That was true effectively ish up until Early we 2000s. started. Yeah. Well, when we switched from just speeding up single core CPUs and started going wide with multi-core CPUs, right? Like that, that was the change to that. It was like, yeah, we're not going to, because right. there was a massive heat problem. The, the faster you made it. Right. So, so it was way better, way more efficient to go wide with it. Uh, uh, of course that, that was a big change from an arc, a software architecture standpoint uh where because you weren't just writing for one chip anymore you now did have to write in a multi-threaded way and and all that right john yes yeah um i would say intel led the charge with the the whole multi-core thing which i'm i'm sure you know they were working on their labs for a while but yeah as you pointed out there were thermal and other challenges but yeah um depending on the type of programming that you do yes um you may have to manage threads yourself and that can get um <laughs> complex absolutely yeah yeah i mean we... the os can handle some of that work but if you want to write a really efficient application then you probably want to manage the threads and the processes with each core taking up uh, a thread again there are some uh tools and all that that do that for you but if you want peak performance <laughs> uh -huh. Ooh. Nicely done, oh, sir. Oh, 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 oh. ka -ching, Mr. But, um, Braun. <laughs> I, I got to say, actually, most of the stuff that I did was lower-level embedded work, and multi-threading wasn't really a smart thing to do if you wanted to maintain control of the system and make it reliable. That, that makes sense. Yeah, for that kind of stuff, sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it it you know it'll it'll the uh, the ultra will do up to 128 gigs of unified memory, which again, as we've talked about with other iterations of Apple Silicon M1, means that you get um, uh, you, you get you, you the RAM is is shared the memory is shared between the GPU and the and the CPU, so it doesn't have to shift data back and forth. It just like both chips can can take a look at the the memory as they choose which mm -hmm. makes things way more efficient because you don't have to send stuff across the bus from the CPU to the GPU for the GPU to then process and then send back and that sort of thing. Um, but that, you know, 20 cores on the CPU, 16 uh, what they call power cores, right? And then high performance cores, sorry. 
and then four high efficiency cores that's on the ultra so again it's you know it's the 10 core cpu of the m1 max doubled 